carried the shooting script. This is your final stage where you're already working with other people. This is going to be made. Whether you're the director or you're working with a producer and a director, the following points are all going to help you get this thing ready for production. Okay. First up, the one-page pitch doc. Remember how we talked about the story spine, title, time and place, okay. genre, protagonist, goal, obstacles, stake, theme, in the end by. Well now you can use that same format to write a pitch document so that you can attract people to get involved with your script. Take your final script, take that document of the one page spine and see if you can write a pitch doc using those points. Again, you're not trying to tell all the events of the story, you're going to miss that out. You're just going to lay out the foundations of the story and jump to the end. Okay. That's going to help you find a quick way to talk about it to people. That and your log line. You're probably going to want to go back now and rewrite your log line because things will have changed from when you first started out with the story. I hope things have changed because you've had all this great feedback. If you're going to work with a director, it's important that that's you set the relationship up in a professional manner. A director's going to want to have certain input. They're not just coming on board to make a film the way you're going to tell them. It's inevitable they're going to interpret your written words in a certain way. As a writer, you may want to control that. But this is where collaboration comes in. There's going to be areas where you guys are going to have to negotiate and talk and communicate. Hopefully a good director is going to bring things out of the script that you hadn't even seen before. When a director comes on a project it's usually because they've been attracted to your project because it's interesting, stimulating. It presents opportunities for them to try things out. It may also be because of the incentives that you've put out there. You've got a project that's moving on. You've put money up. You've, you've organized things as well. Make sure that the two of you are communicating clearly right from the start. One of the things that's going to happen is a director's going to start giving you notes. They're going to have opinions if they're a good creative director. How are you going to handle those notes? So far, we've talked about the feedback has been very much about can you ask things as a question. A director's not going to be doing the same thing. There will be questions. A good director will ask to try and bring out the true intention that the writer had. But at various points, the director's going to need things. They're going to have to say, I cannot make that work. I need you to rewrite it. I need, I need this or how, you know. Things are going to have to change. How are you going to change these? We need to change it. And that can be quite tough if you've been on a project for a long time. But that's the nature of making films. It's a collaborative process. But make sure you're upfront and honest right from the start. If you're the person who's brought the script and put the money up, it gives you a little bit more clout. Okay? You've got a little bit more power there. If you've gone and sought out a director as a, pro, as a fellow collaborator and both here seeking out a producer, then you really are on equal terms. It doesn't matter if you've been writing this thing forever. Okay. Beware that if you don't take on board notes and rewrite, you will be rewritten. As a director, I've often ended up in a situation where I've tried to, to work with a writer to help me solve a, just a logistical problem and they haven't been able to deliver for whatever reason and then I've ended up having to rewrite on set literally because something's unshootable. Okay. That's not good. It means that it's written in a hurry, rewritten in a hurry, never good. On the other hand, if you're the director, then it's up to you to make this thing shootable. And you're going to have to start thinking and making some really tough decisions. So, remember we talked about ambition, and practicality. 
Do you really need every scene in your script? The last thing you want to do is spend money and time and energy shooting scenes that you'll never use in the edit. And that sometimes that will mean what a horrible term that's used called killing your babies. Killing the scene, the one that you loved, the one that had, you know, had the most importance for you, but actually isn't really needed for the story. If this is a note you've been getting all the way through your rewrites, it's time to deal with it now. Otherwise, you're going to turn up on the day, you're going to spend a lot of time and energy on this, you, you're going to tie yourself up in knots, and you probably, when it gets to the end with an editor, a good editor's going to go, we don't need that. And you're going to have the same argument, except now you've wasted a lot of time. Okay. So be tough on yourself if, if you're the director. One area that people don't think about when they're writing a short script is just how useful it is to have an editor in at this stage before you start going out and shooting. Often people shoot and then they go and look for an editor. Or they shoot and they edit themselves. I would say to you every single time, don't edit your own film. Get in touch with an editor. Find a fresh pair of eyes. Find a really good editor, somebody whose work you've seen before and you've been impressed with. Get them in at this stage before you shoot. It's incredible just getting a pair of fresh eyes in with an editor who can solve problems now and can also point out things saying, while you're shooting this, can you also do me a little pick up there? Again, even as a writer and, and if you're not directing, it's really useful to talk to other people who will eventually be involved with the project or, or who work within the industry. So talking to production designers and art directors, they can give you really great insights. So if your script, if you're filming your scripts in a really polished form at the moment, don't be afraid to talk to production designers and art directors. Their input can be really valuable. It can bring extra, it can bring out extra opportunities for you within a script. It can also solve problems before you get into them right now. I'm going to talk really briefly about working with actors because it's, that's a whole video in itself. Okay, that's a whole other module that we would need to do. And um, so I'm going to just give you some very simple points on working with actors. What do actors look for in a script? What attracts an actor to get involved? If you speak to most actors, they'll tell you, number one is the character's arc. Where does the character start from? What are they like at the start of the story? Where do they end up? What's happened to them over that period? They want an interesting journey. They're looking, to have, they're looking to have a journey themselves, to have to think about this character that they're going to play. They want to be stretched. They want to learn something about themselves. And again, all that work you did, remember we talked about giving them an inner, inner emotional life? The mad, sad, bad, glad, scared. All that stuff's important for an actor. Truthful motivated dialogue. Again, we talked earlier on about making sure that dialogue's believable. What do actors hate? A big one, a number, number one for so many actors I come across is impossible expressions and eye acting. I guarantee if you go online and look for scripts, from new writers, you will find tons of eye acting. A couple of examples I've found just by scrolling through the internet and finding up new, new writers and their scripts that they've posted. Here's a great one. Her eyes were filled with pain and longing. Now, I defy you to go to the mirror, just put this on pause after I say this, go to the mirror and try and do this. Imagine the mirror's the camera and, I, and give us eyes filled with pain and longing. Okay. Utterly impossible. And, you, and if it's important to get that piece of information out on screen for the audience at that moment and you've written it as eye acting, your actor is going to say to your director, what am I supposed to do? Guess what? They'll make up dialogue or they will create an action that they'll do. 
and if it's made up on the day in a hurry, you know, it, who knows what the quality is going to be like. So it's your job to find a visual way of showing that. Go back and look at some of your earlier scripts and then hopefully you will cringe when you see eye acting. And guess what? I've been guilty. Done it. We've all done it. Here's another one. Super expressions. Lovely one I came across. Her face could not hide the hate and pity she felt. Again, try in front of the mirror. Impossible. So don't expect an actor to do it. If this stuff's important for the audience, find a visual way. Find an action. Another area actors hate is unearned emotional outbursts. What they mean by that is the character there's been, when we talked about an arc, there's been no build to this. Suddenly a writer writes in, she bursts into tears. Okay. You've not given anything for the actor to get there. Also, when it comes to the audience, the audience will just be, what's that about? You've not earned it. So watch out for those. Again, Erratic, just any erratic shift in characterization you've not earned. You've got to plant the seeds for it. So, we've taken you through coming up with ideas. We've taken you through various tools you can use to make sure you know where you're going. You've gone through your bullet points. You've done your scene by scene. You've written your drafts. You've gone through getting feedback and doing your rewrites. You've written your pitch document and you've found people to collaborate with. And you're all ready to go off and do your shoot. Well, guess what? As soon as you start shooting, there'll be rewrites. Okay? It, it's inevitable that things will need to change because of the, it rains on the day you're meant to film outside and you have to go inside. Or, so if you can, stick close to the production. Remember, don't start telling people how to direct it. That's not your job anymore. But if this is a short film and you've invested a lot of passion in it, make sure you're available to do rewrites because there's a good chance things will happen. So I wish you the best of luck. It's a really exciting job. And make sure that you get the most out of it. And, and the, the number one most important lesson of all is be nice and be positive. This is an industry where people talk to each other. If you build up a reputation as being a positive, good person who's, who's a pleasant and, and a pleasure to work with, it'll go an awful long way. So, best of luck on your shoot.